So I want to welcome Erik Valfors on stage. He's our final speaker today. And his topic for today is bootstrapping, I think. And he's very tall, so we'll jump on stage. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yeah, cool. So it's funny how like I never drink coffee and today like whenever I'm back in Stockholm people say like can't we just have a, a coffee and chat a bit and I ended up drinking three shots of coffee and like in combination with me being like hangover from yesterday uh, you're going to be able to watch the culmination of this happening right here on stage because it's like all reaching the point where I'm so nervous about what I'm going to talk about because I've never done this before talking about bootstrapping. Um, and actually, I'm not going to talk so much about that. I mean, Google bootstrapping on the web if you have a, your mobile phone or so. You're going to find great tips there. There are all these kind of top 10 bootstrapping tips there. They're all awesome. Like Guy, Guy Kawasaki, I think, is probably the top hit. Um, instead of that, I think I'm going to... I wanted to tell you, and I hope I can do that in 20 minutes, I wanted to tell you four stories about um, our little company. Um, before I go ahead, though, I will... Um, tell you a little bit about who I am and uh, what we're doing. Um, so SoundCloud is, is the company we're running since two and a half years. We decided to go down all the way down to Berlin to start it there. We actually started out here but uh, ended up moving the whole thing. Um, I am currently the CTO uh, there, so I'm kind of technology and product responsible. Uh, we're about 25 people. How about the million registered users at the moment? So we're actually the, the, the biggest platform and also the best way for artists to, to share the stuff they're working on and the stuff they've, they've done. So now we have the whole, whole range of anywhere from bread, bedroom producers to Smashing Pumpkins using the site. Um, we're kind of like Flickr, but for music and audio. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to the background that I need to say. Uh, I was actually at SSE a couple of years. Back and then pretty much when I came out of KTH, I started the company right away. Um, anyway, so the first, the first story that I would like to talk about is about chairs and the importance of bootstrapping your, uh, the importance of bootstrapping your office space. Uh, now, in the beginning with SoundCloud, I started it with uh, my colleague Alexander Young. He's a very funny guy. Uh, and we had no clue what to do. We knew that we were going to do something in the space of music and web. And... Uh, my hands are shaking, so I need to kind of keep them together like this. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so in the beginning, um, we had absolutely, like, we were kind of clueless about, you know, how to raise funding, how to attract a good team, you know, where to even ha house the office. We ended up finding this kind of rickety space, not too far from here, actually. Um, and we had this kind of shitty furniture that we just, that we just kind of laying around that we had there, uh, very bad chairs, for example, um, standing around there in the office. And one day, like, we had this few connections here in Stockholm. Um, a friend of ours, like a kind of a half-shady entrepreneur, a little bit older, he knew one of the sort of hotshot VCs of Scandinavia, and we decided, with, which was a very stupid idea, I realize now, but didn't realize back then, to actually bring this sort of hotshot VC to our very rickety office. This is not something you should do. You should probably go down to whatever, Hotel Anglais or something like that to, in the beginning. Um, anyway, so he came there in his big like BMW, arriving there, and uh, showed him our very sort of humble little uh, conference desk. And he sat down, and we started running the pitch. We didn't have like proper slides or anything back then, and the idea was kind of not very focused in the beginning. So. Turned out very difficult, but like we started to talk about the idea, and I realized that this guy knows nothing about the internet and, the, and Web 2.0 that was kind of hyped around the time, um, and none of that stuff. So, for example, when I mentioned that SoundCloud is like Flickr for for music, Flickr.com, he was like Flickr.com. Yeah, that's interesting. Girls. It's like no, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It has nothing to do with girls. Anyway, at some point he said like, yeah, it's it's. Uh, uh, the, the, the office space here is kind of a little bit shady, and I mean, the chair, it's like almost falling apart. So, and then I was like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, we're trying to save money here. And then the other guy said like, yeah, but I have a whole failed startup in my garage standing around. So that was actually the best thing that ever came out of that, uh, that little meeting, that we actually ended up renting a car going to this guy's garage. And indeed, he had the whole office space, or basically the whole thing, like everything you need to start your office, 
stashed away like neatly in his garage. So we were able to kind of cherry pick and pull out all the nice furniture. Among those things were five extremely uh, nice kind of di design classic chairs, it turns out. Like afterwards we Google them and we find out that these chairs are like 1200 euro each, like Finnish design classics. And I'm still using those chairs at our current office. We actually shipped them down to Berlin. And I'm, I'm, every time I sit on those chairs, I enjoy it so much how we were able to bootstrap and find those amazingly good chairs to sit on. And I'm still using them. They're amazing. I'm not going to say anything more about that, but that's like bootstrapping your office space uh, can be a really nice thing. So this is somehow part of it's like the core of starting something new coming across the things. Anyway, the, the, the second story um, is about sort of our desperation when we launched our private beta and, and, and realized like, okay, how are we going to get musicians to use this stuff? MySpace is around. I mean, there are a ton of services doing basically everything a musician needs online. There's like, you know, 100 million users on MySpace at the time or something, and all the artists in the world were already on it. Mm. So it became kind of pathetic when I was found myself, because I'm also making electronic music, found myself clicking around like on my f basically my friends on MySpace, like sending them this kind of generic, hey, you, you want to try out something new <laughs> kind of message, <laughs> adding about maybe 20 new users per day. Uh, anyway, so we decided to, to try something else. So we, we basically we had a kind of a small uh, but fairly interesting following on the site. Um, we decided to throw a big party because one of the great things about Berlin is you can get really kind of spectacular office space for almost for, for free. So we had this very also kind of rickety space with nice chairs uh, and a huge kind of roof terrace where also there, there was access to the roof. And we decided to kind of to, to, to use that space to its fullest potential. And the idea was very simple. Basically fly in all of the most interesting, like we ran kind of, kind of ran an algorithm on the site to find out who was the, who were the kind of the most up and coming interesting people using SoundCloud. And we sort of cherry picked from there and found some, some 30 artists or so that we flew in from all over Europe. And that was pretty much the only budget for, for the party. And we, we made a sort of a showcase thing where everybody were playing half an hour sets. And the interesting thing was that they were all inviting their friends. And we had maybe you know, some 10 or 15 local, uh, local artists as well who were, you know, were doing all kinds of weird things. Um, so they all invited their friends. And our, 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 our office basically was totally trashed and turned into like a, 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 an illegal club for two days. Like the party didn't stop. We basically started in, in the afternoon already and then had this half an hour. Anyway, um, the police arrived and they tried to shut it down, but it, it wasn't possible. And that was like after that, that was when I sat there watching all of this. And I realized there are 200 people on, on our office space rooftop jumping to this guy singing like this funk kind of uh, one man show thing. And it looked like, I don't know, something out of a movie. Uh, I just realized that we have done something here which is fairly unique. Like I've ever, never ever been to a party, actually ever since I've never been to a party that great. And anyway, why am I telling you this? Well, because the day after, we kind of all woke up and was like, totally fucked. And the police had been there actually three times. Uh, our chairs had survived because we had kind of one small space where we stashed, stashed them away. Everything else was trashed. Uh, the space smelled so badly that you could, we couldn't work there for a couple of days. Um, what happened though was that we started receiving emails. First, the usual thank you notes where people said, this was the best party I've ever been to, hands down. Amazing. And then the second one was like an application letter with, with a CV starting out. I was at your party the other weekend and how can, how can you guys have such a great product and throw such great parties at the same time? I want to understand that magic. I want to be part of it. Uh, and then it just went on and on. More and more application letters, more and more kind of really interesting people involved you know, in the tech scene, in the music scene, wanting to join SoundCloud. And there were articles written about it. I remember a couple of months ago, uh, after the thing, a journalist called me up from the Süddeutsche Zeitung, which is actually like top five um, newspaper in, in Europe. And I was really happy. I was like, oh, you want to know about SoundCloud, I suppose. He was like, no, no, no. I'm writing a piece on rooftop parties in Europe. And I heard you are the guy to call in Berlin. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, no, no. So anyway, 
It, turn out, it turns out that this was like one of the best things we could have done to bootstrap the whole SoundCloud community. We had a lot of artists signing up to the site and directly sending us an email saying, can, I, you, know, can you somehow slot me into your next schedule? <laughs> we didn't. I, I, we threw only maybe one more party after that in the last three years. We're actually not really a party company. We're working really hard. We're not throwing that many parties. But somehow the illusion of that has, is still with us today, and it's amazing. It attracts great people, actually, and not the kind of maybe party trash that you would uh, think. We have some of that, too, but try to, to, to avoid them. Um, okay, so on to the third story. Kind of around that same time, uh, we needed to raise funding because we didn't have any money. We were basically running out of, of cash. We had only a very small team, and we did see some traction, so we had to sort of continuously upgrade our servers and so on. Anyway, so my co-founder had an excellent idea at the time. <laughs> so we knew this laser cutting guy in Berlin who, who had a really nice kind of shop in a, in a kind of rough space where he was doing all kinds of weird favors for event, local event um, marketing people and, and designers and so on. We were basically cutting big things in, with a laser cutter. So my friend um, and my co-founder Alex, he had this really nice leather jacket. And he decided that I'm going to make a big SoundCloud logo and I'm going to basically spray paint that on my leather jacket. And, um, and he did that. And it looked kind of amateurish and kind of not so great. But you could kind of, you could still, it was legible. You could read that it was the SoundCloud logo on there. And then the thing was, the thing that happened after was that he started wearing that damn jacket every day. No matter, he wore it during the whole summer. It was, he was sweating, like every day he had that jacket on, <laughs> leather jacket. Um, and he went to conferences, a lot of conferences, because I mean, the way to raise funding, if you're kind of a no-name startup, you really need to try and make a name for yourself and sort of hype, uh, get hype in the, in the VC community. And like everybody does, that uh, could potentially invest in you should kind of know about you and have, have you on the radar. And turns out that this jacket is probably the best, uh, maybe one of the sort of three key things in our funding plan. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible. Like, people tweeted about this jacket. It was like, I saw this guy again at the airport. He was going for the web. He was running around with the Web 2.0 conference badge and the SoundCloud jacket. And I wonder what, the, what those guys are up to. And then, like, whenever, if you looked on, on images from a conference, you always saw this guy. Everybody's running around in white shirts. And you see this one guy who looks like a kind of run-down rock star with an amateurishly spray paint the jacket. And he was up on stage uh, at some point during one of these big conferences, and he used the trick because, I mean, it turned out to be like a conference starter, icebreaker for any kind of conversation. So in the end, he was just turning around like, remember this. And like, it worked. It really, really worked. Like, peacocking is incredibly powerful. Um, so that's bootstrapping your funding. Now, the, the fourth story is... Uh, Maybe less amusing, but it's incredibly powerful. Um, and it's the fact that, I mean, we, we, we've been trying hard to, 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 to sort of start a, a platform around SoundCloud. And I think we're kind of well on the way there now. Um, but pla starting a platform, and I mean, in the sort of the VC world and the funding world, the platform play is like a very difficult thing to achieve. And it's high stakes involved. And, and it's the chicken and egg problem is, is huge. Because you're trying to build something on on which other companies should basically depend on for their survival in the end. Like, basically, other people should be able to build a business on top of your site or platform or whatever. And, uh, and that's incredibly hard to achieve, because in order to get the nice applications built on top of your platform, you need to have people using it. But in order to have people to use it, you need applications to have... So it's, it's like this kind of chicken and egg thing, which is really, really tricky to, to sort of do a cold start of. So. So what should we do? We, we basically went around kind of half clueless for, for a year. We had an API, so we had the kind of a developer interface. We had everything there from very early on. Like, we were like, yeah, we have to have an API. This kind of, if anybody's an internet nerd, it's like they, they know that this is, this is important. But we didn't really know why and like how we're actually going to get people to use it. So anyway, so we ran around for one and a half years, approached almost every company in the industry. We probably approached around 200 companies, sending them sort of cold contact emails, um, 
and got very few responses and, and very little, not, not so much interest. Um, until our man in London, uh, we have one guy in London, he runs a desk there, and um, he came up with the brilliant idea of arranging a music hack day. And a music hack day is basically um, very simple, it's, and, and actually the, ha the hack day thing has become incredibly big. I mean, it's super powerful. Uh, you basically get together 24 hours and you hack on something, you create something valuable, and then uh, you go away. And <laughs> you, you can decide if you want to do something with that afterwards or not, but for these 24 hours you're hacking, you're building stuff. Um, anyway, so, so, so we encourage a lot of people then mm, to hack the music industry for 24 hours. The first one was in London, uh, almost a year ago now. And, and I believe in these 24 hours, we probably built way more than we built in the one and a half years before that. Uh, that was built on our API. So in these 24 hours, was, was you know much more value created on top of our platform than in one and a half years previously. And the cool thing was that we got a ton of media coverage. Uh, because, I mean, and actually, and also a key thing. Anyway, so they were like, after this, the whole thing took off, and now, now there's been like 10 or so music hack days all over the planet. There is like 10 more planned, and we are not even involved anymore. We have actually spent zero money on these music hack days. Zero, zero money, and I think we've had hundreds of projects built on top of SoundCloud now in the meantime. And the, the thing is that for our sales guys, or people who try to approach these companies to try and get them in to integrate, it's very easy for them to, for example, say, yeah, but some, some kids uh, you know, came to this music hack day and built a competing product to yours in less than 24 hours. So maybe you know, th that's how easy it is, would be for you, you guys to integrate. So maybe you should think about it. And it works. It really works. Now we have almost all the major players kind of committed to actually building something on top of our platform, which is amazing. So I just wanted to share that. that, that this, this thing about the hack day thing, I mean, it's, it's, you need to play it right, but it can be extremely powerful to just do something instead of actually talking about it. So, still shaking. Uh, uh, that, was, that was four stories. I'm not sure how, how I'm doing on time, but the, 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 the thing I wanted to wrap up with is like, bootstrapping is, is, is all good and you should do it, but, but in the end, it's about building something that people love to use and find value in. And I think that's what we are, for example, fairly good at. And I think that should be the focus of what you're doing and not so much about other stuff and like the marketing and so on. That all comes naturally if you're having fun and you're doing something that people love. That's it. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Um, I'm giving a little gift, or we are giving a little gift to everyone who's been here. Uh, I really wish that I have had something, had had something healthy left to give you. Oh yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> because with the shaking and everything, I thought, I think maybe you could have used some yoga or so. Um, but uh, uh, Josephine told me she saw on Facebook that you had a great dinner last night. Yeah. yeah. So we'll give you the dessert. Oh. Uh, it's uh, a gourmet chocolate. Oh. I hope you, you can use it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>